there's a couple of things that I'm going to assume um, that you will already set up and I'm going to help you get these things set up before we get the tutorial started. Uh, first we need to select our aircraft. Uh, for the purpose of this tutorial I'm using the Boeing PMDG 737-700, the 2D cockpit. Um, I would recommend that you start with that one for this tutorial also, although it's not necessary. Uh, the other thing, we need to position ourselves at Los Angeles International Airport. So let's go ahead and uh, type in KLAX, which is the airport that we're going to be starting a tutorial at. And we don't want to be on the active runway. We want to be, let me just move this down a little bit. We want to be in a gate. Uh, any medium gate will do. I'll just gate, take uh, gate 27. And let's hit OK. And now we should be positioned at the Los Angeles International Airport. Let me just hit recall on this real quick and get rid of that. A couple of things I'm going to assume first. Um, I'm going to assume that you have your aircraft started, everything's ready to go. You should have already configured your overhead panel. Uh, if you haven't, there's actually a tutorial that I have on YouTube which covers the startup procedure for the PMDG. I think that's something that you should view before we go ahead and start doing the FMC tutorial. So let's go ahead and close the overhead panel and let's open up our FMC display. And that's very easy to do. We just hit the uh, little F button here in the corner. And that's located right here. So we're just going to hit that and we're going to open up the FMC. Let me just position that so you can see it a little better. And that puts us at the main menu for the flight management computer. I want to talk about uh, flight planning a little bit. One of the programs that I'm loading up right now is called FS Build and it is a pay payware program but it's very good at what it does. Well, obviously what it allows you to do is oops, let me hit the wrong button there. What it allows you to do is um, create an entire flight plan based on your location which is obviously um, we're at Los Angeles and we're going to be for this tutorial going to be going to Las Vegas and FS build is unique in the fact that it'll create an entire flight plan for you really at just a click of a button and then on top of that it'll give you an entire map that you can kind of look at it's actually a very nifty little program. I use it quite a bit. And if you're really lazy and very proficient at programming your flight management computer, it'll even let you export your flight plan directly into the FMC. But uh, we're not going to do that, obviously, because we want to learn how to use this thing. Your Your other option that I want to cover is if you if you don't want to spend the money on a commercial program there's probably a half a dozen different websites that will allow you to do flight planning one of the most popular ones or at least the one that I use is flightaware.com if you navigate to that site and you click resources and you want to go down to IFR route analysis recently used IFR our, yeah, I have our route plans. It'll kind of do the same thing. Uh, put in your departure airport, put in your destination airport, and it'll actually give you a list of recent flight plans used by real-world aviation pilots that were filed for this particular route. In this example, we're going to be using this one right here. Uh, if for no other reason than the fact that it was used 51 times. So let me just copy this real quick and we're going to stick it in here just so we can see it a little better. So as I said, we're going to be departing the Los Angeles International Airport. We're going to be going to the Las Vegas International Airport. Our flight altitude is going to be uh, flight level 290 and this is the actual route that we're going to be taking and the reason I chose this destination is because it's nice and short and it'll be real good for this particular tutorial so let's let's go back to our FMC 
if you've never worked with a flight management computer before, it can be a little intimidating at first because there's a lot of buttons and it looks like there's a billion different functions, but as you will very shortly see, everything makes sense and it's actually grouped together in a very nice and easy format, so it, it, it is very, very easy to follow and very quickly to learn. Let's just look, look at the main parts of the flight management computer real quick. The keys over here, let me, uh, I'm not a great artist here, but these particular keys here, these are your line select keys. That's what they're commonly referred to as. Uh, so just so you're familiar with the terminology. And then if we move down a little bit, uh, we have some other buttons here, which we'll get to shortly. You have a number pad, and you have um, obviously your, your your letters. There's two different ways that you can enter inf information into the uh, flight management computer. You can certainly just you know hit numbers like this, or if you want to make it a little easier for yourself, you can just hit this little bar over here. Just click on it once, and you'll notice that little keyboard light will light up and now you can actually use your keyboard to enter information into the flight management computer. I'm not going to do that because it's going to interfere with the program that I'm using to record the session here. And then the only other area that I want you to focus on a little bit here is uh, this area right here. This is what's called your scratch pad. If you notice anything that I type into the FMC will appear right there. I'm just you know, hidden numbers, they don't really mean anything. Okay, that's that's called your scratch pad. So when you when you hear me refer to that, you'll know where that comes from. Okay, so let's get started. We're obviously at the main menu. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna click on the uh FMC key right here. And that's gonna just bring us to this main end, uh, main main screen here. Uh, it's obviously telling us what kind of aircraft this is. Uh, our last database nav data information. Uh, this is the um, actual database that the FMC gets its information from. That you should uh, you should actually update this as much as possible, so all your approaches are up to date. And that's it. So this is this. It's not actually not all that important. This particular page. So let's go into our position initialization page, which is uh, our line select key right here. If we just press that. Before we do anything with the flight management computer, let me just move this over a little bit. We have to tell it where we are, because obviously, if it's if it's going to know where it's going, it needs to know where it's coming from. And the easiest way to do that, obviously, we're just going to type in KLAX, which is the identifier for our airport. And you'll notice that as I'm typing that in, it's appearing into our, what's this called? The scratch pad, right? There it is, right in the scratch pad. And I want to stick this right next to our reference airport information. And I just click the line select button. And you'll notice our GPS coordinates have changed. And I'm going to stick this in here. And there we are. So one of the things that you may have very quickly figured out already is that obviously whatever is in a scratch pad, and if I press any of the line select buttons, that's where that information from the scratch pad is going to go. The other option that it's asking me for is the gate. This is actually not uh, this is not modeled in Flight Simulator. Um, if you if you do want to put something in, we can. You know, just put in you know gate C three. Well, it's not even in a database, so that's not going to work. So we're we're going to go ahead and uh, just leave that blank. You notice that I got a not in, in database error message, maybe because I selected the wrong gate. Honestly, I don't remember what gate I put my aircraft on. Uh, so let's clear that message, and we can just hit clear, and just keep backspacing, and there we go. You'll notice, obviously, the route 